Hi, this is Rick DiUlio from TK99 Radio in Syracuse, and you're listening to a couple of degenerates. And unfortunately, I'm related to one of them. This is the good, the band, and the ugly. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's that time of the day, that time of the week, that time of the month. Oh, (laughs) really? We're going to do that every week. Okay. It's always that time of the month. Awesome. We have a great show for you today. Yeah. We're going to be monkeying around today. Oh, Oh, yeah. I like it when we monkey around. That's just weird. It is. Let's slide this music out. A little bit. There it is. So we got things going on today. We've got Mr. Monkey joining us, nice. Scott Serling and, and Patty, and it's going to be cool. It's going to be a great, uh, going to be a great show. I like it. But first, with his testicle difficulties, yeah, we yeah. have Uncle Hime. Uncle Hime, visionless Helen Keller, Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm blind. Yeah, ah. you, you, you could talk. They can't see you. Uh-huh. We, we might have to. I don't know. Insert like a. An Uncle Jimmy graphic down, down like, down like, down, <laughs> down here, here or something. Yeah. yeah, right underneath our yep. sack. Oh, yeah. Well, big sack. Don't talk back. So, what's right. uh, Jimmy? How you doing, man? How you guys doing? We're oh, doing good. good At man. least we can hear you this week. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand it, but we'll. I'll figure it out somehow. That's all right. We'll get through it eventually. Yep. <laughs> or we'll just have to have you just continue to call in, or maybe FaceTime us. Did you go anywhere this weekend? Bob. Oh, uh, just Thursday. Uh, Thursday, I was invited down by the Grace Music Group to to see uh, Sydney Irving and the uh, down to the uh, Anita Callet Theater. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was at. Um, um, so you're nice and prepared. <laughs> room, and uh, and it was, it was she opened up for um, the uh, Linda Rothstadt experience. Nice. Oh. And, and the girl who uh, the girl who sings the link, Linda Ronstadt, uh, Tristan, she's uh, like the sixth runner up on season fifteen of American Idol, so she's pretty good. Oh. Pretty good, a uh, real good show. Good, yeah, good. that's cool. That's cool. What else? Did, uh, any? You didn't go see anything else? No, I was headed out to see Scars, and I never made it. So, oh, you suck. I know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who was Friday? Oh, Infinity. Infinity was Friday. I went and saw Infinity. Yeah. I got up. They let me sing. At the Manoa Field? Oh, no. It was Saturday. No, it was Sharky's on Thursday. Yeah. And then uh, then I went to Americade up at Lake George. Did you go to that? Yep. Lots of bikes. Lots. It's lots. a hike. <laughs> this is a loaded question. Did you have yours? I did not have my bike with me. Okay. You're a dick. Yeah. Thought I'd ask <laughs> He knew. He knew. I know. He knew. He was just being. I just wanted a, to know. He was just being a fucking dick. Just wanted to know. Uh, well, show's over. <laughs> I'm done with you. What do you want? Uh, what's your last week? Your pick of the week was uh, Taste of Syracuse that you didn't go right. to. Didn't, nope. Nope. And um, <laughs> nope. 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 And nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. And nope. And then uh, yeah, so, everybody yeah. Knows it's camp. It's the summertime, and yeah. Uh, that's yeah, a, I get out when I can. I get that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what's your pick of the week this week? Oh God, there's so much going on today. I, uh, this week, actually, probably, um, God, I don't know who I want to go with. You know, I guess I'm going to go with um, See Through Faded. They're at Rocky uh, on Saturday at 8 p.m. You know, Joe Xline from Scars and Stripes uh, joined them. I don't know, maybe six months, eight months ago, and uh, it's it's comes they've come so far in such a short time with those with him. Wow, uh, I mean, he got Joel. He's, right, he's, he just brought their the level up so much, you know. Right. What what, but, what style of music are they doing? And then he got the the blues no. fest at the uh, fairgrounds, which is a uh, fifteenth through the seventeenth. Mm-hmm. That. It's going to be great. A lot of stuff there. And then Friday, he got uh, locals only at the Lost Horizon. Uh, Wagner 3000, Elephant Black, 
uh, Mad Damage, um, which is uh, Jeremy Nelson. He's a lead singer for Purple Light and Dealer's Choice. So he's got he, he does three bands now. So plus he does uh, his own acoustic stuff. So nice. So all ori- all original music, Jimmy. Huh? All original music. Uh, at, at the at the the loss, yes. It's all original music. Yeah. Cool. Well, see, yeah. nice to see that the loss. Is, yeah. And that's actually a good segue with today because it, it really is. It's a ninety five X. It's actually um, Scott Dixon. Uh, he puts it on. He took over. He took over some of the booking stuff at uh, back at the Lost again now. So uh, he's getting that goes along with his ninety five X locals uh, show on the ninety five X radio. So okay. uh, he's uh, he's kicking it right along. Nice. Well, yep. it's, like I was going to say before, you you, you didn't hear me speaking because <laughs> sure. cut off. But um, it's a good segue for us today because you know yep. we've got we've got Scott. Uh, Scott Sterling from uh, the old Lost Rising days. From the old Lost Rising. Yeah. Right. Lost yeah. Rising days, yep. You know, and uh, Scott ran sound, but we'll have him. Yep. He booked bands and ran sound. and It'll be cool to talk to him about some of those, I think. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know. I mean, I don't know. Was he there at the yellow, what was called the yellow balloon? He might no, have been. No, he's not your age. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jimmy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I was exactly. there. Yeah. Yeah, God see? Was, God was there. He was. I was there. Jimmy yep. and I did the boogie oogie. Today. Oh, good. We did. Under enlightenment before you guys like, got kicked in. I was trying to get your attention. Yeah, you, you did. You got a good attention. Yes, you got it. Huh. Still couldn't get your camera fixed, though, could you? How's the smoke up there, dude? Canadian smoke. Yeah. It was terrible today. It was horrible here. Can you can you actually, I mean, you can smell it yes, outside. Yeah, Syracuse had a reddish tint, uh, orangish reddish tint today. Yes, it did. Yeah, yep. It, but that goes all the way over. Uh, my 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 coworker boss, she said that she could actually taste the smoke. Yeah, yeah, in the air. Yeah, there are some places you could. And and there's an advisory out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, stay in. The, yeah, if you, like, especially if shows. especially if you've got uh, especially got like um, asthma or whatever, they tell you stay inside today. Yeah. Yeah. So don't don't stay out a lot. Of course, uh, you know. I'm, I know. I just feel cold, uh, shut their stuff down tonight, and then uh, uh, what the truck that's in uh, Utica Rome area, mm-hmm. they shut their stuff down because was they couldn't they, they couldn't have it. So yeah. Well, I don't know. A lot of a lot of kids had uh, after school activities shut down. Yeah. And oh, no, no, no outside playgrounds. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 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 Jeff. Jeff can't. Drive around the <laughs> parks with his van. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. Did he pour concrete today? Who? Of course. Smoky of course. concrete. Yeah. That's all the concrete's going to be smoky. Why wouldn't you? That's right. It'll have that nice orange tint to it. Yeah, I just put a put a chicken out front. I want to see Did if you? Can, yeah, you can, see can, if smoke, can it? smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be funny? It would be funny, yeah. actually. It just well, amazes it's just, you know. It just amazes me that, like, the smoke travels that far. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get into what could be, but I mean, no. years ago when Mount St. Helens went. Yeah. Two, three, like three states over. Yeah. You know, they had a bunch of ash. Yeah, they did. I'm dealing with ash fallout every time you're on the show. <laughs> hey. Hey, no. You should have seen him, Jimmy. He walked in here tripping oh. over shit, carrying oh. a bag of. Dude, the rest of his lunch with him. <laughs> I was straight, and I mean straight from work. He drove. He drove the cement truck here, it's sitting, sitting out cool. front. It's That's sitting. Cool. It's sitting out front, churning as we speak. I'm thinking of a couple people <laughs> you want to throw in there. Yep. <laughs> well, yep. I got a list of them. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh believe me. Can you imagine if we all put put oh, a list together? Man. There'd be a lot of names on. There'd be so many names. <laughs> How many people? I know, right? Truck. Gee, he never invites me over. Why is he having me over to the house? Yeah, come on over. Yeah. yeah. Having a barbecue, dude. Yeah. No, you got to crawl through this hole. You got to crawl through this hole. Crawl through this tube. Crawl through this opening <laughs> to get your, <laughs> claim your prize. Oh, all you hear is, you yeah. just you just hear this. It's kind of dark in here. <laughs> What's going on? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Just stand there until your feet turn to pudding. Do your feet don't move? Yeah, right. I'll I'll let you out. We're gonna go visit the aquarium now. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Anyways, that's outstanding. That would be funny. It would be. Hmm. hmm. So nothing else is going on, huh, Jimmy? No. No. Well, that's. I see you. Uh, I, you went to just camp. Did I see that? Yeah, well, that was that was last week. That was that was two weeks ago. Or two weeks ago, yeah. You're always a little behind. Did we did we talk about that last week? We no. did. No, we did not. Yes, we did. No. You and I did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't here. Correct. Yeah. Because we we premiered the uh, the beer towards the end of the show. Did we record on a different day? Tuesday. No, that was Jess Novak. It was Tuesday. Yeah, we recorded with Jimmy was there. Right. Right. But I don't think he. I don't think he knew. Yeah, we we mentioned it to him. Yeah, we might. You know what, Jim? Do us a favor. Go listen to an episode every now and then. (laughs) You son of a bitch. (laughs) You don't even listen. Do you? What? Did you watch your own interview with Rick? Oh, absolutely. Oh, we watched that one. Yeah, we did. We watched that one. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. We we were mentioned a lot on that. We were. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we were. What's this here? Mm. Uh, wasn't, that, wasn't that interesting? <laughs> I'm letting our guests know. He's here. Huh? He's in the waiting room. Oh, they just came in. Yeah. See? Hey, room. Wow. All right. Well, I guess that okay. means I guess that means uh, you're out. <laughs> okay. Well, tell, tell Mr. Monkey and Pat Patty and said hi. I will. We will do that. Hey. Okay. All right, brother. We'll see you next week. You got it, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, right. We might. Well, you'll we'll hear you next. We'll hear week. you at least. <laughs> yeah, at least you may not see me. That's All right, right brother. Then, okay. All right, Bubba. Bye. We'll see, see ya. Why? Let's see here. All right. Well, they're they're coming on now. Here we are. Hold Look on, I'm gonna make this. that bigger. Oh, we can hear you. I had to update. Oh, can you hear us? I can. Oh, good! Excellent! Wow, that's a, you got a good sound. You got I a know. great, great photo. What photo's okay, about to get ruined? A second here, fellas. I just got. I might have bumped the camera when I. Yeah. Got started. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at your belt loop. So. Yeah. It's a nice belt loop. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. You should go. Uh, let's see. Here, let's see. Here, have a sit in your a, chair. I think we had a good shot. There you are. Look, and we're there and, and we're live right now, so yeah, all the extras. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Okay, so you got us. You can hear us and everything. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. we're actually live doing our show right now. So oh, sit very your, cool. Sit yeah, your yeah, ass down and let's get going. Off, <laughs> yeah. So sit your ass down. Sit your ass down and let's talk now. Let's talk. Look at this. Good. How you doing? So, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is this is uh, Mr. Mr. Monkey, Monkey and Mrs. Monkey. Ah, <laughs> Mrs. Monkey, Miss Monkey, Ms. Monkey, Ms. Monkey, Singer Monkey, Singer Monkey, Singer Monkey. Singer Monkey. All right. And what, what is he? Spider Monkey? Strummer I'm Monkey? Main, I'm the main Monkey. Yeah, Spider Monkey. I like that. You're too. Spider Monkey, friend Spider of Monkey. all. Yep. Hater of none. Hater That's of right. None. That's uh, Scott and I've been saying that to each other for. A long time. 30 years. Back really? when I was only three. Oh, good. Yep. He taught me how to speak. <laughs> he That's was a even... young rocker, ladies and gentlemen, out there in, in yes. uh, podcast land. Which took... is very cool that you guys do this. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we are blessed to have yes. uh, so many great musicians in our in our life, Yeah, um, such as yourselves, to be able to come on and do this with us um, on a weekly basis. Yeah. You know, And the nice thing is, it's helped us open doors for a lot of the national acts that mm-hmm. we're that we're booking right now to be on the show good. as well. Yep. But uh, yeah, wishing but, the music is good. By the way, here we are. We're in we're in Monkey World headquarters. This is uh, <laughs> this, this is, is cool. great. This is where a lot of things Monkey happen right here. Uh, we we heard we were way over there, and I'll show you later. Yeah. But, uh, All right. And uh, and there, the Taddy May our little our little world just for you guys for today. Arms are overrated. Yeah. Samantha's here. She's having a smoke. 
He's got her Mr. Muffin <laughs> on and her Mr. Muffin T shirt on. Nice. Oh, this is this is great. Well, we we want to we want to start off by just kind of giving you a premise of our show. Um, I don't know if you watched any of them, listened to any of them. Uh, we we like to let some folks that may not know who you are know where you come from and some of your your music history in Syracuse. Uh, but then we want to talk a little bit about some of the maybe highlights and yeah. and uh, maybe oops moments throughout oops your moments. career maybe. That might have happened. Sure, yeah, whatever you want, man. Throw it in there. If you think of things or anything from the Lost Horizon days that comes to mind, uh, yep, that'd, huh. be, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. So, uh, just to, so we, this makes sense here. This is Patty Delman right here. Hey, she's the singer in Mr. Monkey, and we've been doing this for about five and a half years. It's both our duo. Uh, we're going to do somewhere in this mess. We're going to do a couple of songs for you. Got the guitar right over here. Nice. Uh, and then we have a band with uh, uh, Bill Young as our bass player from uh, out the, the far Gen C O A. Sarah Kirkendall, small. Yep, small. Uh, our drummer from uh, Geneva area. Patty lives out here in Bristol, sort of near Canandaigua. I live on the edge of Onondaga County, Georgia, so we're all over the map. But we play all over the joint. Yep. Which we'll talk about later. I got a bunch of stuff here about shows coming up. But I also made a list because I want thought we could talk about. We, T and I, will talk about. All these different places, which are all places that we really like, and there are people who are really working hard at, at yeah. doing a business involving entertainment, which, of course, everybody on this podcast is all about, right? That's yes. right. That's right. And, and, you know, when you see Small, tell him we said hello. Yeah, please. Well, he. Oh, absolutely. We're going we're gonna to force him to watch this later. Good. Because he, he uh, we, we, we uh, auditioned him. We auditioned him. Did he come once or twice? Problem is he didn't have a car. Correct. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, it'd be great to be in the band, but I, yep. you know, we could only play gigs that had Centro. He works for a car dealership now. He yeah. has a car. That's well, no, no yeah, we good. figured, we figured it was good. just a short period, but yeah, what, what, a, what an incredible, yeah, great guy, great drummer, great drummer, nice dude, nice dude yeah. ever. So is our bass player. Yeah, I I, so love them. Yeah, there's only one downside to the whole place, the old guy. What's that? But, you know. <laughs> I said every all the nice young people and then the old guy. Uh, what are you going to do? Hey, nobody's getting younger. That's right. No. So, Scott, tell us a little bit, uh, what what got you started in the music? How long ago, if you really want to show your age on this one? but Oh, I don't mind. Uh, uh, I'll say it before I say it again, the, the TV soap opera, Dark Shadows, which was about vampires. Is how I became why I play guitar. Kid I was in third grade with, talking all the time in school, find out we both like dark shadows. His house a little closer, we run like crazy, got about two forty five, get home at three o'clock, out of breath, we'll watch dark shadows. And when I got over there, he had records. And we had bands that we both liked, just even at that age. And he also had a guitar. Well, I got the records and we both liked dark shadows. I need to get a guitar. My parents wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> and, uh, my grandmother did. Got a classical guitar. I was at eight, eight or nine years old. And that became steel string acoustic two years later. And I was 13. We lived near Detroit. Got an electric guitar. Again, my parents wanted nothing to do with it. Coerced my grandmother, my loving grandmother, mm -hmm. to buy me an electric guitar and a small amp and a combo deal. An Epiphone EA250 and an Epiphone EA65 and 130 bucks came in an acoustic guitar case. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty funny, but That's it was awesome. electric and it made noise. That's awesome. And now, now here we are. That's cool. Yeah, Very cool. Nice. And Penny, how about you? I playing guitar, and then uh, my father moved us around a lot. I landed in Syracuse later on, and went to music school at OCC for a couple of years. The tutor thing there. Had a bunch of incredible professors who all, you know, did all kinds of other amazing stuff. Got very lucky. Went to the UC, which is SU at night. But a lot of people definitely don't know this. I took contract law and accounting because I thought, well, oh, wow. because if I don't know those things, I'm done. So I just, I just, I did that, which was, was weird, but it paid off. You know, it makes you pay attention to the detail. No, right. that's. That yeah, that's probably fun. helped form you into the businessman you are today. Right. Sure. It, it sure didn't hurt, uh, uh, you know, having uh, not, you know, not, not be, you know, being able to read 
you know, somebody's version of the contract or whatever. Uh, but that came into play a lot of times. That was good. Uh, I played in original bands here, mm -hmm. uh, The Native with Penny Joe, uh, Thorpe. And then a little later, another band with her, Rock and Bones, had a band in between, ETV. Those were all original acts trying to get I things happening. We got pretty far down the line with the Rock and Bones band that never really got to you know, make a record for somebody or anything like that. Yeah. But, uh, but you were but you were local favorites. Right. You know, you know yeah. putting it in perspective. We played around a bunch of places all over the state. We had a really good time doing only yep. what we wanted to do. Well putting it in put, put, New York a lot. Putting it in perspective for people who don't know from back then and some of the younger listeners. Yeah. If you're gonna compare it to some of the headliners to cover bands now, but guys like Scars, guys like Country Swag and they yeah. draw, draw big crowds, hard promises yeah. and, and those guys, but Rock and Bones all original music for the most part. Yeah. And if you did a cover, it was your own version of it. If, if and there you... was a, yeah, exactly. And then there was a, you know, there was a whole giant period of time, which we are all familiar with from being, you know, lost horizon rock hangout kind of guys. And I worked there for so long, but the, you know, the music business via via location came to us. Yep. Yeah. So many shows should have never been in the city of Syracuse if it wasn't sitting in between everything, every major city in the Northeast. Right. If you're driving through 690 or 81 or the throughway. You could pay for a day off and pay for hotels and feed the crew and the band, or you could pick up a gig in Syracuse. Yeah. Right. Right. We got a lot of shows. Yeah. And I'll tell you a funny, a funny moment on that, just that moment when Cinderella played there on their, I believe it was their second tour. Yes. They had staging. They were on a big bill with somebody else. And this was a fill-in date that nobody knew about, including the guys who were working until like the day before, because they were just so angry and filled with seething hatred as we were setting up that day. And the sound guy wasn't, wasn't feeling well. He was looking forward all week. I'm going to have a day. I feel a little better. That wasn't happening. It's Lori was his name. He was British. He was gigantic. He made me restack the front end. He didn't like the way it was. <laughs> but we did it, and, and his idea worked. It was packed to the walls. Those guys were great. They were really nice people. Tom Keeper was a super cool guy. Yes. They were not. The West Coast bands and that doing that kind of music always almost always had an attitude. Mm. And those guys were from Philadelphia, so it just wasn't that. They just played the show. There was a lot of stuff they couldn't use. Some of their things they couldn't use their drum riser, this and that. But they were they were fine. They they just they just stood there and played. It really wasn't you know room to do you know whatever was going on in uh, in their bigger show. But but it was cool. But, but they were super upset because I don't think management like told anybody until until it was there. That was a day off. Not anymore. <laughs> Guess what? Well, thank God for guys like Dan Shaw back then. There, yeah. That's how he got his back his, his backline start is because nobody wanted to bring their their show and they wanted all backline, so they didn't have to bring the big trucks in, right? You know. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, so, it's good stuff. Patty, what's your background? Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I started doing music when, about you know going to open mics and such like that when I think I was maybe near fifty. It's like 48 or 49 and then um my husband would drag me to open mics and you know i was all scared and nervous and like go and started having a good time and then an epiphany moment for me was um a local guy had a jam here and he made me feel so comfortable now um, he's a teacher and that's uh was like a magic moment for me i have a polar picture of myself going just, oh, it's embarrassing. I would never want anybody to see that picture. I was totally in love with, like, what was going on. I, I looked like a total, like, I looked ridiculous. But <laughs> and then I met Scott. I was in a, in a band, and the band wasn't doing very well. And they had some jealousy and stuff like that going on. And they were, like, accusing Scott. They were, I remember one time, I don't think I ever told you this. They were like, who is this? Main monkey, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and they accused me of booking the show. Um, and I didn't, Scott, you know, he's the booker. And anyway, he booked us to play at this place that they wanted to play at. And I had nothing to do with that. So we got into a big argument. And I was like, you know, that's it. I, you know, I'm done. I called Scott up and I said, I can't do this anymore with those guys. 
good day for me. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So that it can make sense to you, we'll tell how we collide very incidentally and how there is this five and a half years later. So speaking of going to jams, for when we first started Mr. Monkey, there wasn't, we didn't know caddies. It was just the Steel Brothers at Steel, Steve Steel, was in the Alice Cooper Band, so we're all over the world with Alice. Great guys, incredible players. Christopher Eels was our guitar player initially, and just myself. And it was only supposed to be a 14 week run of a jam in the backyard at the Dinosaur Barbecue in the Bowling Yard. Yep, I remember the that. Manager, yeah. The general manager had thought the summer before, he was looking at the last year on tape, he calls me up like way late in the season and goes, Let's add another night. He wants to add every Wednesday when everybody's got something going on or they're booked or whatever. What could I do that would be just the same, you know? So I call those guys up. What do you do on Wednesdays? Nothing. Right. Uh, Nothing. <laughs> I think you guys froze. You froze. Oh, boy. That's a great shot, though. That is a great shot. <laughs> and the same the Oops. next night, we were all out to Rochester and hosted the jam at the dinosaur there. It was great. And way into doing that, one night, Patty walks in. We walked her walking. She looked like you walked off a stage from her. She'd come from a rehearsal. And she signs up the list. The bass player, the bass monkey, I'm hitting the bass monkey going, did you see that girl signed up on the list? Trying to read upside down, Mike, right? Yeah. Says she sings. And he's, the, bass, the bass monkey's going, Steve Steele's going, yeah, yeah, she looks cool. And we're still playing a song while this is going on. And, uh, <laughs> And she found out that we, we did uh, a Doobie Brothers song, Long Train Runner, and then she stayed there for about 40 minutes. She came back about four weeks in a row. And we would leave the gigs. I would drive, Chris and I would drive together, Chris Seals and I would drive one together. We'd go, man, maybe we should hire that girl. Yeah, we should get the singer. Yeah, she's great. And back about four weeks later, we said, do you want a job? And she said, yes. So that's, that's, how that all that's cool. It's completely accidental. So go to a cool open jam, because you never know what might happen. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, Syracuse thanks you, Scott, for, for yeah. finding the talent. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I got it. I got to tell you, Scott is truly what we've always said that we we think bands should be more of in Syracuse. Yeah. yeah. And putting on an actual show, show. not mm -hmm. just going up and playing music, not just having. You know, and that's all. Really, that's all it is right now. Yeah. You know what it, it, it is? What's our tell them our theory? We want to entertain. Yeah. You know, that's what we like. We want to show. Like, yeah. Fun with the capital. You know? Exactly. People tell us they were entertained, but they had fun. And those are like our two of our favorite compliments. Well, you know what? It, what opened my eyes again to it, and we're just as guilty. Yeah. Our shows were sure. just playing music and having some fun banter on stage and not too much Which but just, there's, there's nothing wrong with that it's just some people want to do it different but, and you never a lot of bands that just like they show up and play and they're just as amazing that's what they do right right so i don't want anybody to feel like you must have a show no 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 we no. Just, we, right. we think about it that way but you know but if you're going to be playing cover tunes yeah the same cover tunes that a good 30 percent of what's out there is playing make yourself stand out somehow mm -hmm. so when i when yeah. it, what really opened my eyes a couple of weeks ago uh, reopened my yeah. eyes is i went and i saw johnny peluso and those guys and steve shad uh, with the booty foundation oh, the out of what you know it just brought back the days when the, johnny johnny can they can put on a show they put oh yeah uh, yeah and he's funny as funny as hell oh and uh, yeah so tutorial Tatora played drums. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yep. I, I didn't realize that at first. Uh, he lives in Vegas. He's in, in the Blue Man group. Oh, right. Oh, he's, he's unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. Drummer. Oh, it's but sick, was, sick he drummer. Through, yeah. He played with those guys. I, I didn't. I thought. Well, I didn't know because there were a couple different drummers. I think during the course of it. Yeah. But it said original, so I, that's mm -hmm. awesome. He's right. such a great player. So he he came in. He was in between. He's in between. He's touring with Femza Rock right now, and he's also touring with Count Seventy Seven. Yeah. So yeah. and then the Blue Man Group on top. So oh, he's yeah. just we, we Jones, Jones from Dracula Jones. We went. Jeff invited us, caught us, and took us up at the Rochester War Memorial several years back when he mm -hmm. was in one of the touring units. Usually he's in the stationery in Vegas. Yep. 
but in the touring unit, and that show was incredible. Three drummers. Yeah, yeah. And then all the blue men all played percussion, too, besides the band. Tracy Bonham was the guest vocalist on the tour. Oh, oh wow. It was hysterical. That's awesome. And we met them backstage, and they don't talk. Even, no, they don't talk in the show. Yeah. And they don't talk after the show. Right. And they oh, don't so sign so. autographs. They put their handprint on something. The, the blue guys, yeah. Oh, so it's so like, you're blue. It's yeah, very, that, it's very cool. Yeah. The, the two comedians there, but the one doesn't say anything. Right. Like Laurel Hardy? No. <laughs> Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller, yes. yes. Thank oh, you. no, no. Jay and Silent Bob. They, oh, yeah, that them too, too. Yeah. Exactly. Them too. Exactly. But yeah, the, so so Jeff Jeff's actually going to be on the show. Um, we're just trying oh, to awesome. fig, yeah. figure out what day because he's I like know. super busy, dude. I'm I'm always on the road, you know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we're definitely going to do something. And I know Johnny's going to be on. Uh, they're re, they're having another reunion right before Halloween out there at Sharkies oh, cool. again, and they're trying to make sure that Jeff can fly in for that. So. Oh man, that'd yeah. be great. He's yeah. such a great drummer. But and, and, you know, getting back to just the whole show, and I love what you guys do. I see the pictures, and yep. you know, you bring you bring the whole the whole stage presence. You know, people are like, got our guys here too. They're like, it takes it takes them like forty five minutes just to set up all the monkeys, right? <laughs> like Scott's not afraid of it. We streamline that, Mike. Patty's <laughs> daughter. Well, tell them what your daughter did. Yeah. We weren't very smart. We're monkeys. We're not yeah. smart. Right. For years, we for years, I think sometimes you just get accustomed to the misery. And you're so busy that you don't think, well, how can I do this smarter? Mm -hmm. So our daughter comes home from Seattle for a visit. She's a teacher. Prior to coming home, she had gone on the, attended uh, two gigs with us. She said, Mom, I don't know how the blank you guys even do that with all these monkeys setting them up. She said, I had enough after the second gig. You need to, <laughs> you need to you know, somehow put these monkeys together. So. She got some tomato cages, two tomato cages. We have actually only nine pieces now. Our tip jar isn't here. But look, they're all put together on tomato cages. So it's like it's actual yeah. set. You just drop a thing and there's like 15 monkeys yeah. and 15 monkeys. Yeah. It's really yeah. easy, and especially for yeah. doing like we were at the Wing Fest and we want to use all our stuff. So now you can go bam, 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 and you're out of everybody's way. And, uh, and the next band is taking over. It only took over. it only took you forty years in music to figure out, yeah, to get yeah, smart on get, something. Trying to get smart. Stuff with monkeys, you know. Um, yeah, this has changed our life. We still want to pinch ourselves after, and we're like, I can't believe how long we put up with doing this. So, and these these guys have clips on them. Yeah. Or we would take their arms and put them around, you know. And, like, duct tape of things, it. rubber bands. That's, he's got clip irons <laughs> and the tree stands. I know we're maniacs, but it works. That's it's fun. That's and we great. do it in all the different sized places. It's easy, easy. We play it all over the joint. Played 128 shows last year. We're going to try to beat that this year. Good for you. Oh, wow. Wow. We'll be at show 50 by the end of this weekend for this year so far. That's awesome. Oh, wow. So, Patty, you went, went from, like, from, from famine to feast. I mean, you right. were kind of more of a fan and then became – Full in both feet with this whole. I always, yeah, um, was always interested, you know, in music and things like that, but just, I don't know, just didn't have opportunities or whatever, how I was raised. And um, yeah, it just didn't happen for me. And I've always admired people that, you know, do music and perform, and I just think it's wonderful. And it's just, you know, it's just about fun. It sounds so lame to say that. But it is. It's just about fun. You want to be good. But if it's not fun first, you yeah, don't want to do it. Why do it? We right. feel like yeah. we're there to entertain people. We can't guarantee every night there's going to be a line to come see us. But if you have yeah. people there, we will make them have a good time. And uh, and, and they'll hang around. They won't leave. And that's been going really well. Yeah. Um, you know, playing, playing, all, playing all, over, all over the state. You go a little east, a little west, a little north, a little south. The band lives all over the place. But it all works out. So I guess nice. this would segue. We we should ask Patty this question okay. first because Scott's got so much more. I'm sure he get through it. But Patty, biggest like since you've been doing this, maybe a uh, fangirl moment uh, where you just were like, "Wow, I'm 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 around these people," or something that just blew you away that music brought to allowed you to do that you couldn't do before. You know, 
I think a couple of the big shows that we've done, and didn't we mention this when we did the, um, yeah. I don't know, what was that show? It's, it's, we have a show in a couple of, we played this place in Livonia called the No BS Brewery, and this was like, we did a, a, a an interview with another cat, uh, and it was like a couple of days after. Yeah. And it was funny he asked a similar question. Yeah. But I tell him. And we that. said, "Oh, that was like just yesterday." Because we had just yeah, had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was this great show. Well, we just did it. It's just all fun, you know. I, I think when Scott and I when we met, we initially met. Um, it was natural to like sit on the floor, like when he played guitar and I sang. It was just totally natural. We didn't talk about it. We didn't think about it. We just did it, and we do a lot of that, and that's always fun. I don't know if you've seen pictures of us flat yep. on our backs, yeah, and absolutely. like this, and yes. in doing that, we jump up on tables. But it's all of it's just always just so much fun. Um, it's like to be trying to turn the people into an eyes over and proud. Yeah, and you, you succeed at it a lot more than I might have thought. In, in a lot of like very divergent type of places, you know. Uh, but it's fun, and we've met a lot of great people that run places that we play. Almost everybody now, now you guys know, when we are in the rock and roll world, you know, 30 years ago, the restaurant was here, and it was a bar with a band in. Now, almost everybody has got food involved, which is really smart for yeah. bunches of reasons. And it's also part of why things, some shows and stuff have moved earlier, and it's not just current events. It's been happening for a while because that synthesis of, oh, man, I could do everything. I can have dinner at this place. It's really good. They always have quality entertainment. I mean, that was a lot of the concept of the dinosaur barbecue. But, uh, uh, it, it, you know, for a really long time is, is that that combination of thing, which was new to me when I started there because I was always in the world that we were in. There was just, there's no food here, man. There's a bar and there's a rock band. That, we yep. don't need anything else. Right. We're going to go to Perkins later. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but but yeah, how, about, how about even the fact that even uh, our shows in the old days, you got there at noon. You did sound check. It was a whole day event. You, you oh, felt, sure. you know, yeah. it was. Right. You got there at noon. You did your sound check. You milled around for a bit. You didn't really leave the venue. No. Because uh, you just hung out and then you probably started drinking or whatever. Yeah, you might have. You could have ended up like a manslaughter show you and could everybody have. getting in a fight on the show. <laughs> Correct. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah, you're fired. The thing. There was yeah, that, no kidding. You know, all these, like, that when once the multi band shows started and more people want to do their own material so they could do like a set, just a single set of what you do best. Right. So right. It's got eight million great songs when they're first starting a band. But that, that just, I think it helped create. And in several different kinds of music, a community, the metal, got, everybody seemed to like get along. It wasn't like Clash of the Titans; it was everybody supporting everybody. That happened also in the '90s, yep. when the you know in the in the you know Nirvana, Seattle sort of era there, the same thing, um, and and other stuff in between. But especially once it, there was a lot of bands, and it was like, wow, lot, well, why would you want to leave? Everybody I know is here, you know, and we're right. playing with these three other good bands. I want to watch them play. They want to watch you play. Yep. And that, and then, and then you know, more people, you know, and then hopefully that cross section of our friends see your friends, your friends, and that worked. We had zillions of, of local shows that were really, really well attended. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and not to mention that you've had some great talent that have come out of Syracuse and gone on. Yeah. Um, people that are still with us, people that have, you know, unfortunately passed away, mm -hmm. but just some great musicians that came out of here. But when some of the bigger projects were coming out of here, it all started with local guys yeah, helping right. them out. I mean, Joey Belladonna yes. taking guys like Darren Scott and yep. Scott Schrader and, and Mike uh, Merrifield and Merrifield, John Hamilton, all those guys went with uh, DFK, Dave Effen King, Dave Effen King. Yep. They think they froze again. Okay, there we go. They're back. Okay. That's right. You, at least you haven't frozen at some weird pose. I know. Who froze with us? <laughs> oh, that was, um. I think that was the comedian. Was Ian, it Ian Bag? Ian Bag. He froze for a second? Yeah. With a funny look with on his face? With a weird look on his face. Yeah. Yeah, man. You turn it off if we freeze and we don't look really cool because we're, we're really. Oh, we're no. Really we're going to totally oh, no, yeah. capitalize on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to have t shirts made. Like, we look at each other every night for the show. Do I look cool? Yes. And hey, I ask you, do I look cool? And say, yes. You know, we get a little extra hairspray. There you go. 
Going to have T-shirts made. Extra hairspray. Fu- the Funky Monkey T-shirt. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's all. Hey, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, like we were talking about that that thing of bands, you know, feeding each other and sharing each other's crowds and the ability, you know, a scene, you know, when that metal started to like, you know, come in in that in that late eighties, that you know, Lost Horizon, it was like, wow, we got to, you know, we got to do more of this. We got to put the bands together, mm-hmm. yeah, and then it'll become a thing, and then try to put those bands on anytime they would let us put local bands on headliner shows if they weren't bringing somebody. You know, we were gonna do. We were gonna put as many bands as we could get away with. That's right. right. And make it into a little event, you know. And so many people got to play with a lot of cool national acts, and uh, and you know, and uh, get in front of bodies and see how. To, well, what do these guys do that they've got a record deal? How do we do that? Right. Yeah. Right. So no better way to do that than to watch that happen right in front of you while you're while you're on the bill. What what fanboy moment have you had, Scott? Like the the biggest artist you've ever met because of let's say the Lost Horizon or music. There's a couple in the Lost Horizon. I will tell you this: I was I never and I, sometimes I kind of regret this, but I thought I was not cool to ever ask for autographs. Yeah, I never did. I never let right. the crew fuck with anybody about that or whatever. All, all we did, you remember the wall of doom in the front. We would ask bands as they left if they wanted to sign our wall, which wasn't like something we could do something else yeah. with later. Right. That we did that. And then if we didn't like you, we didn't, wouldn't ask you to sign the wall. Right. But uh, but when the bass, when, when John Atwistle, the ox from The Who, yeah. played with his solo band, yep. Yep. is the only time I ever asked for an autograph. Uh, he signed the ad for the show. I still have it. Yep. Um, but I did it later because he was so unbelievably cool. Oh, he was right. He yes. He wouldn't think it was it was weird or being intrusive because we had gotten along. I'll do. I'll tell this quick. But he had had their tour manager had called. He used this guys out of Long Island called Rat Race Choir when he would tour. They knew tons of goose stuff, and the guy could sing a pretty good daltry. Because mm-hmm. of course they're going to do. Ton, you're going to see Giant, so they're going to do a lot of goose songs and a lot of his solos. Right. But anyway. The tour manager called, look, I'm going to have a bunch of stuff shipped to you. This is the first date of a run. Okay, sure. Well, I'll make sure there's, you know, six pack. That was our bartender, for those who don't know, our legendary bartender from Lost mm-hmm. Horizon, with the best bartending name ever, Six Pack. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mike, yeah. for years not knowing that he had a real name. I never knew Ray his real Diano's name. Diano's father said his name, real name in front of all of us one day. Mr. Paisley was there. We lost our minds. We were so upset. We never thought he had another name. <laughs> Bill Linsky was Six Pack's actual name. Wow, they'll, they'll see. Okay. There is a secret that no one ever. Right. There's a no, lot of nobody knew. No, nobody that ever worked there, or including Greg, ever called him that. The only person who ever used his real name was Greg's father, uh, Anthony. They told, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and uh, it's, it was very started plenty. But anyway, so Ant Whistle, the, the, the boxes we get, we, when the, they get there, we uncase them. It's John Ant bass rig. <laughs> It's brand new. The PV Mega Bass just started to exist. He got prototypes. Mega Bass bottoms. Two Mega Bass bottoms, two Mega Bass heads, two Marshall cabinets, and two Marshall heads. And that whistle is fooling around. He's got the PVs on. He's fooling around. He turns on the top ca- the amps that run the Marshall boxes. He hits a chord, and it sounds like you're at a Who show. There's that sound of like that guitar and bass almost combined. Right. And he's he fiddles around, and I, I, I've already been introduced to him. I'm standing next to the monitor board. The monitor guy's there. The tour manager's there. And John Russell turns around and looks right at me. He goes, oh, Scott, how's it sound? <laughs> and your brain freezes. You go, oh, fuck, the ox. The, John Russell just asked me, how does his <laughs> bass sound? But, and, of course, it was great, so I wasn't, you know, fooling around. Oh, I hate your new rig. No, it's like. Oh, Mr. Atwell's well, it's amazing. No, no, no. Call me John. And he was that was he was that's who he was. He was just the coolest guy. Yeah. And that's why he would tour when they wouldn't, because he just liked to tour. Yeah. When he's in the little the little band or whether it was with the Who. I, I remember but, seeing him seeing him there and I was blown away. Just being yeah, in his yeah. presence, you know. They opened with Summertime Blues and they went into Boris the Spider, which yep. is one of his yeah. songs. Yep. And it it was great. It was a great show. He was a super nice guy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were really nice there. John Bon Jovi was really nice. Couple times, there, yeah, they played there two times, and then they they uh, showed up there after the, in between, in after between the show, their Providence, Rhode Island show on his birthday. Yep, 
and the dome is the next night carrier dome with Skid Row open. Yep. Yes. Remember? They, well, they, I remember. They, I was I was there. You there. I was working there with, and, and we got the call. The bar got the call that said he wanted to come in and mm-hmm. just kind of hang out and kind of clear the bar, you yeah. know. And and. Yeah. And I don't know who was playing at the time, but they're like, all right, everybody's got to go. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they get off the plane. He wants to party. He's drinking. Yep. He wants to keep drinking. Let's go. He tells the tour manager, let's go to that place we played in Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And he's got Tico Torres, the drummer with him. Yep. He's got his then girlfriend, who's going to be his wife in about three weeks, and is still his wife, Yep. with him. He's got his security guy. And he has brought a couple of the Skid Rows, Rachel Bowl and the Snake Sabo, yep. to mm-hmm. hang out. And they're all kind of lit up when they get there. The only night in my life I ever saw Greg give things away. Yeah. He didn't charge anybody <laughs> for anything. <laughs> and they were, they were, we were there until at least five in the morning. The drummer from Don Joe, we took over the DJ booth. We still had the uh, turntables yep. and vinyl, all this cool 70s funk. He was having a great time. Yep. I remember. Don was messing with the Skid Row mm-hmm. guys very hard. And uh, it, it was really fun. But he's, he was an incredibly gen. Both times we worked with him, they were super pro. And it was the second time they played, they only did two or three club shows, and they were going until yeah. for ACDC. Yep. They weren't going to play clubs anymore. And then so, when he but, when he was at the Dome, the first things he says, last time I was here, the the place we were playing had a fucking pole in the middle of the stage. Yes. He said just like that, and everybody knew. He we, said that on stage? Oh, yeah. Dome? He goes, yeah. last time I played here, there was a fucking pole in the middle of the stage, and everybody was just cheering. Because we, we, anybody yeah. who knows the loss knew, knew there was a pole in the pole, middle of the stage. Know? Oh, yeah. It was in the contract. You had to sign off on it. And a lot of times, booking agents would not tell or, or management would not tell the band, which really worked out <laughs> very poorly a few times. Quiet <laughs> Riot, the, the, uh, he lost his mind. Somebody on the crew realized that we could, he could stripe it so it would match his black and white stripey look. Yep. And then because he didn't want to do it, John Waite flipped out when he was there with Bad English. Didn't want to do the show. Yep. Uh, and, uh, oh, my God, what's the guitar player from Journey? Neil Help Sean. Me out, guys. Neil Sean? Yeah, so so he, he, tells, he tells John Wade that he'll fire his ass and hire somebody before <laughs> showtime if he walks out the door because he doesn't like the pole and he didn't like the monitors, even though the monitors were actually his. Uh, <laughs> but he got over it, and he actually apologized to me after the show. Uh, for for being kind of a knucklehead, because uh, the show went great and he had a good time, and he actually gave me a bottle of his wine that we had to buy, you know, a couple of them. Uh, to hear she had this with the crew. Uh, I'm very sorry, I, I was out of wine. That was that was huge. I didn't expect him to do that, and I right. didn't go there expecting him to do that. I only went there to pay pay them that night. So Scott, you talk about some of the you talk about some of the best bands that were there and the nicest bands who you don't have to name names but who yes was, oh, i will yes oh, okay good who's the oh, biggest dick who was who was the worst the worst person in the music business i think in the world is Ingbe malmsteen i agree yes yes 110 i don't care how technically well he plays and i'll say this every day all day long i'm i feel embarrassed when he's on the cover of magazines he was such a dick. such a cruel evil person yes I, yep. I watched him do watch him torture his crew uh during sound checks he fired his the bass player in the second time he played there on stage during the show and they <laughs> walked out the door with about at least five six tunes to go on the set list bands just standing there on stage they're screaming the yelling tour manager goes out the door they get on the bus and they leave <laughs> <laughs> I had, none of these people spoke english Right. Almost anybody except for the Canadian tour manager and his wife who did the merch. Everybody else was from Germany or Scandinavia and spoke about six words of English. I had to figure out how to get them all back to, to them and their personal stuff to the hotel because they only had a truck with seats for two people. Yeah. Oh so God. it was very fun. But he was, a, he was just a really horrible person. So, okay. So, Scott, he's playing, he's opening up for Triumph years ago at the Landmark. Yep. And. Okay. I'm was, working at the time. I'm working for 93Q. I had backstage passes, and I was in my glory. And Billy Hatch, and I want to say it was either Pete Walker or Mark Van Marter. I think it was Pete. These are all rock guys. Yeah. So these are all- <laughs> so so Billy Hatch and and 
Pete Walker walk up to Aiden. And it had to be Mark because Pete wouldn't have given a shit. Mark walks up and says, you know, I'd love to have your autograph. And I got to ask you, how do you, how do you play those licks so clean and so quick? And he looks at Mark and he just says, from signing fucking autographs for idiots or something like that. And, oh, the autog- wow. and, and I think Mark was like, wow, ripped it up and threw it at him. I was like, fuck, go fuck yeah. yourself. Have <laughs> you seen the Pantera video, video with him in it? No. Where they're trying to give Yngwie donuts? No. You but look no. that up. I will. Is he just it's, a, it's, in a, it's in like a whole like thing that they have of, of, the, of a Pantera thing, but I'm sure you could just find that scene. He's they're staying in the same same hotel with him. The Pantera guys are, of course, barely liquored up. Right. And they, they's either trying to get in the elevator or out. He's got a couple of guys with him, and they've got a box of donuts. He wanted. He's fuck you. Get the fuck away from me. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's the matter, man? Don't you like donuts? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really great. It's really great. It's so Pantera funny he said that. Very funny. Uh, yeah. Could be for you to say. Ingve Malmstein. In the back of my mind, I'm like the only person I could ever say that was such a douchebag was him. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! He just was. He was just horrible. His his, 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 his this guy who was mixing him at the time, Ralph Master and Jello, who now runs Huge Sound Company, great guy. Uh, Man of War had been there recently. Their one of their texts, the guy from uh, Cortland Ethica, Doc D A W C who has done amp mods and guitar mods for Richie Blackmore, most famously, and lots of other people. But most in particular, Blackmore, which is Malmsteen really just wants to be Blackmore. Right. Uh, and Richie plays scalloped neck Stratocasters where you scoop out the wood yes. and, you know, on these higher frets for the speed right. and the crazy whatever you do. But you can't go back. You right. I mean? No, you can't. So Ingve takes the guitar to him and Doc tells him over and over again, you got to be sure that you want me to do this to this guitar because, oh, you, you know, go. it's going to be cool, it's, but it's going to be that. If you're not used to that, you don't like it. You can't go backwards. And he, well, oh, no, do the guitar. And he winds up hating it and freaking out. So Ralph says, oh, listen, man, I want you to do what Ming Bay comes in is tell him you just saw a doc and doc says hello. And I'm like, why do you want me to do that? He goes, oh, it's going to be funny. Ralph was the only guy who wasn't afraid of Ingbe. Ingbe really liked Ralph. Plus, Ralph was gigantically huge. It's kind of scary, but a good guy. Anyway, so I did, and Ingbe goes into a tirade about how horrible Doc is and what a he ruined my guitar, my 57 Strat or whatever. Oh, it was just hysterical. But he's just really, he's a really terrible guy. That's crazy. Oh, here's one you'll love. Okay. One of those two shows we did. I Need a Runner. I hire friends of all, another hater of none, Al Axie. <laughs> Al, I go, Al, I need somebody to just be able to do stuff with a car. Like if they want to go to the music store, if somebody needs a, if, you know, this or that. Right. And of course, it turns out, Ingvay's tour manager has prearranged that we're going to make a certain meal for them. That bartender, Patty, makes dinner for them. She lives across the street. She yep. says, I'm not, I made the apartment immaculate. I made them the Mexican food they want. They can come and eat. They don't have to eat in the club. I can eat at my house. And um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the rainbow singers was singing with him that night. He went to Patty's house. The whole band went there. Everybody was cool. Ingvay says, no, I don't want the meal I asked for. He wants Thai food. <laughs> so Al has to drive him to get to the Thai place. I set up dinner for him with our friends down the street at the Thai place. And his girlfriend is in the car, and he spends the whole time he's in the car with Al screaming and berating at his girlfriend. She opens the window. He calls her a bitch and says it's going to ruin his hair. He hasn't even gotten dressed for the – they came to Soundcheck dressed for a show. They came back to the show with all different clothes on. Oh, Jesus. It was just – he was just, and he was just, Al was just having the worst time. He's, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And, and Ingvay's calling his girlfriend to several words I will not say on your show. Right. I just won't. And, but, and Al is having to absorb all this. And he's like, oh man, I, I'm only paying him a few bucks and he gets to go to the show for free. And I didn't think he was going to get abused by Ingvay. Well, you know, I got well, lu- I got lucky twice. It's Cause, funny because he- Greg, Greg hired me to do that for Lita Ford. So I drove oh, Lita geez, Ford around great. for the whole day. And uh, we're walking through Des- a carousel had just opened up. Right. And we're walking through the mall. And she's, she goes, let's pretend we're, we're dating. And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. I'm like a 20-year-old, 21-year-old kid with Lita Ford on my arm. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, don't yeah, mind the ac- don't mind the acne. People are definitely going to believe yes. this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I did uh, I'll this- a couple things about that show. And another, uh, I, I, I met her, or said we meet her, met her not too long ago. She does autograph signing things and attaches herself sometimes to horror conventions, which I've been to a bunch of. Scaricon, yeah. Have, yeah, oh, yeah. I have some friends in the horror world. Well, we met. I met Lita a few times, and she's hysterical and super funny. The last, this is a couple of records ago, probably, but she gave us our, her record, and, and we talked about the Runaways, and it, it was just great. But that show, um, Led Zeppelin's tour manager, Richard Cole, was Lita's tour manager. Mm-hmm. He tour manages in a very different way. He never comes in the venue. He never leaves the bus. I mean, right. he only goes, he'll go, if Lita does interviews, he goes with her to do all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, you go to him. And he was just cool as fuck. And he's, he's Led Zeppelin's tour manager the entire Ze- of Zeppelin. He was their driver to start with. It would just be him and the band in a, in a car going all over America. A gr- really nice guy. But uh, something is there's something that prevents them from truly sound checking or her being able to be there. And it might have been doing interviews or something. It wasn't anything weird because she was completely nice. And the guy mixing was like God. He, he did like a, a really fast line check in between the, 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 the previous opening band. And they came on and played, and in like 32 seconds, it sounded like we were in a studio. But, and, the, and the band, too. Nobody, like, oh, wow. everything was just right. And they were, and she, it was a great show. Well, you know, we were there. Yep. Uh, and she had a killer band. And, uh, and it was just like, I just kept talking to the sound guy going, Is that, are you going to be all right, man? I go, I goes, everything works, right? He goes, like crazy. He goes, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is before digital. You didn't just push yeah. a button, right? He had it. No, no. He, he had it no, memorized. He knew, where <laughs> he'd seen me mix the band before, and he knew that it's, you know everything. Was, I remember him saying something about, "Oh man, you got great low end, blah blah blah." But that's yeah. so cool. We met a lot of so many fun people there. Oh God, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, who's the singer from? Uh, uh, who always had was it great? The singer from Great White, I think Jack had, Russell. He had a problem with his throat, and Greg had me run him up to the hospital, and so he could get. His throat checked out that night, and I'm like, "This guy's riding in my like '78 Colony Park station wagon with holes in the floor." <laughs> oh my God, right? dude. You know, and I'm yeah. like, you know, and he's like, "So why are you driving this?" And I said, "I'm a drummer, and I have to be able to fit all my shit in the back." He goes, right. "He goes, that's all you had to say. I get it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Why are you driving this? Yeah, yeah. but that's what he said. He gets I in the front seat, that. and he's looking around. He's like. Why are you driving this? <laughs> you know, it's got fucking paneling on it. Right. This is before Dick, the Griswolds Dick, had it. You know. Dick, Dickie Betts from the Almonds is playing with Great Southern at the at the at the uh, at the at the Horizon, and a very young Warren Haynes is in that version of the band. Yep. Uh, and the piano player that would later join the Almonds, Johnny, who was blind, and. There was a thing with the bus having to get service that day. The bus driver was really nice. He dropped the band off for the sound check and the tour manager a little early and da, 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 da. And somehow in the mix, they forget that they didn't want Dickie to go through a bunch of nonsense. So he's at the hotel, but he wants the sound check and they don't have a vehicle. So I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I, I picked him up in my like, you know, 87. No, it couldn't have been that. It was more like a 77, 77. station wagon. <laughs> and he was, it was in a non-drinking Dickie bed spirit. He was crazy nice. And uh, it was very, uh, he was very cool. It was a great show. Yeah. That, that's... But yeah, I did the same thing. I go, oh my God, I can't believe this. I can't pick him up in my stupid station wagon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's how it was. I felt like such a tool. But then as soon as I said I was a drummer, he's like, yep, I get it. Say no more. Say no more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so like... speaking of clubs, yes. I'm going to divert for a minute here. Go ahead. So we're... I want to talk about some places we're playing, and I'm going to Patty and I tell you a little bit about the places too. Now, I can't tell you a lot about this one, which Thursday we're in Brockport, a place called 58 Main Barbecue, which is brand new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about that tomorrow. So we'll tomorrow's figure... Wednesday, right? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so now we're going to be in Baldwinsville at the Angry Smokehouse. Nice. Uh, okay. Friday with the duo, eight to eleven. Have you guys eaten there yet? We have. Yes. Phenomenal. Awesome. Yes. Right? Awesome. The food is incredible. Yeah. He's such a great yeah. guy. Such a great yeah. guy. Yeah, Jeff's a good guy. And we got a bunch of shows there. We have like two, three more coming this summer. Uh, but it's all, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there in podcast land, if you're in Beeville area and you have, want some barbecue, 
the angry smokehouse yep. really good yeah we're gonna talk about another barbecue joint it's on this piece of paper too really? coming up coming up so and then uh, we're up in Oswego at our friends at the, the, the Dominic's there friend Chris the Dominic runs joint with her husband and her son is the cook it's super cool peanut butter um, hamburgers there really it's the did oh you, yeah yeah did you peanut butter and I'm gonna add jelly this week so you you did say peanut butter burger peanut butter hamburgers it was a special one night and then he made it again for us because we liked it so much even though it wasn't the special right very cool and then talk about fine food sunday this sunday at wolfie's which is in seneca falls yes wolfie's take a little drive to right on the water the food is ridiculous we play on a pontoon boat that's beached Yes, you do. And where the engine would be, guys, there's the water. That's how that's it. And there's a little my, feet, there's a little sand, and it's great. My my brother has a house on Cuga Lake, and he takes his boat. It's almost directly across from where he lives. Oh, that's cool. So we'll we tell go him to come on over Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Sunday? We might have grass skirts. I'm not sure. That could be. Oh, we'll have to look at the weather. Yeah. We did. It would right. be fun there to do that. Then let's see. New joint. Here's another new joint. Our fr- good friend Bill Harper from up uh, up uh, up that way, Bill Harper, uh, is helping uh, doing the booking at that place called Three Bastards Brewing. New joint in Vernon. Yes. Just opened a month or so ago. Yep. Haven't eaten there yet, but Mr. Harper tells us it's great, and the duo is going to be there on the 15th of June, a Thursday, five o'clock. Then we play Hazel's Pub over there in Syracuse on the 16th of June. Fun bar. And then the place yep. we were talking about where we had the magical show. We're going to be in Livonia at the No BS Brew on Saturday, June 17th with the whole band. Okay. Love it. Love it. Great stuff. Great people. Maybe there's salt beer. When is their salt beer going to be uh, released? Oh, I hope it's is soon. Is that like in September? They take the beer and they put it down in the salt mine. And it, like, let's just say, for example, it goes down as like 4%. And then when it comes out, it's like twelve percent. Whatever chemical reaction happens in that salt mine is absolutely delicious. So get that with peanut butter and jelly. Um, <laughs> you got him like go. he was salivating when he heard about this peanut butter and jelly burger. I looked over and I was like, yeah. something like, really? So something stupid's going on it's in so his good. head. Yep, it's so good. You it's can't like savory and that, mm. you know? That's Very awesome. good. The weird stuff that you don't think goes together sometimes goes together too well you're correct yeah like like jeff and i yeah yeah exactly yeah. i'm like what? i'm sweet and savory and you're the boring bun yeah whatever that's right <laughs> yeah 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 run and stimpy run and stimpy over here <laughs> there you go there you go, there you, go. <laughs> you know without nature there would be no nature show that's right that's right that's right, that's right. Can't forget me. No, no can't not. forget God. No, don't forget God. You better not. You'll go to hell. <laughs> Been there. I know. So we're gonna take you more in our cavalcade of crazy places we play around the world. So we're gonna go way out west near Geneseo to Cathod to the Wadsworth Bridge. Raise, yeah, raise your pinky when you say that. Yeah, raise your pinky when you say that. Cathod. Comes out loose. <laughs> yes. Yes. Here's a, here's a really cool one that we're really looking forward to. Wednesday, June twenty first. We're going to be in Johnson Park, first time, uh, 7 to 9, uh, and it's free. And they got it, the place looks cool as heck. Uh, I think Doyle Whiting opened the thing up on Monday. I saw a video. It was great. There was a zillion people there. Nice. They got a ton of music every Monday, Wednesday, almost the whole summer. That's awesome. Super cool. Okay. What's that? What is that? Oh, paper oh, 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 yeah. Oh, that's coming up, dude. Oh, yeah. That's coming yeah, up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. We're going to get to that. We got, we got some other choice shows coming up. Um, so, yeah, John, Johnson Park. We really look, really look forward, we look forward to all the shows for that. We're going to play Moon Dogs with our whole band in Auburn, which is super. Tell them how much you love Moon Dogs. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it. There, anyway. No. The decor is, oh, my God, it's dark. Little yes. Lights on the tables, and oh my god, I love it. Yeah, it's the super. bathroom's cool. You're thinking of <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of now. Moon Dance. That's in Marseille. Oh, we play there too. Oh, oh, we play God. there too. When we talk about Moon Dogs. People think we're talking about Moon Dance. Yeah, no, no, totally different. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moon I, Dance is sort of like the Wild West. Yes, <laughs> yes. 
Uh, yeah. You want to tell him, the, tell him the little, we had a Mr. Monkey Thong incident there. Patty's going to tell you. Mr. Happened. Monkey Thong so, incident. Well, that might be on the second one. Am I doing? Um, thong. So we did a show. It was this dude's birthday. And I was doing my thing. Hey, man, we're going to do shots and blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of like, you know, yelling stuff out of this guy. He hops up on the bar. And they're like doing that thing from the bar, the hose thing with that water in it or whatever, or soda. And like squirting it off of his belly button. And they're doing all kinds of crazy things, which I thought was great because you really can't do that stuff anymore. So I was like really proud that the owner was going to do that. I just don't think they had a cho choice. So he goes to the bathroom after purchasing a thong, and he comes out wearing just the thong. And we're all, like, playing. And this dude, and he's not a tiny guy. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God, he's wearing. Oh, my God, he's only wearing a thong. Oh, my God. And he has frosting all over his face. Oh, oh my God. God. Not a bodybuilder, fellas. And Patty's daughter happened to be visiting, so she was very oh. horrified. Mom. Does this happen all the time? Oh so and proud, I, mom. So right. proud. So proud, mom. Oh, uh, no, it was funny watching her reaction. <laughs> she just came in from smoking a cigarette or something, and she was like, whoa. <laughs> 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 he was, I, I wish I could, you know, I, I, I'm sure that was his face. He was, he, he was preforming and killing it. But by the end of the night, he had his clothes back on, and they had, it had our drummer sign a drumstick, and they had tapped. The, the, the Mr. Monkey Thong and the drumstick up onto the ceiling. Hmm. So that's that moon dance. Moon dance, which yeah. Which has been a while. Moon Dogs is a super cool place in Auburn. If you're ever in that area, come see us June 23. It's our first time with the whole band there. It's going to be cool. Then we play in the Remedy June 24, which is an awesome room in uh, the uh, Finger Lakes Gaming oh, Casino. Nice. Uh, okay. It's, it's uh, uh Farmington is the town, actually, but it's oh. just this side of Rochester. Yes, Basically. okay. Super amazing in-house production, and it's really nice and staged. And super cool. We're playing. We got. We were there a bunch of times this year. And then we were talking barbecue. We're going to talk it again. June twenty-five. Patty and I be at this awesome place. If you're ever up north, one barbecue. Sandy Creek Pond Pit Barbecue. Oh, heard of it? Oh, right, yeah, right, heard, right. Heard all good things yep. about it. Big guy. This guy, as I will say, from some barbecue experience, he understands the smoke. How great is it? Probably the best uh, barbecue you've ever had. No, it's probably not the best barbecue <laughs> I've ever had, but it's pretty great barbecue. I'll bet you it doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth. No, it does not. It does not. Uh, <laughs> see what he did there? Uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I saw what he did there. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. From my uh, lips. To my ears. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Everything's cool. We love doing this, so this is what we do. We do it all the time. It's all awesome. The time. Good. So it's great, 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 great. All right, I got a couple more here, and then we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff. But I'm going to flaunt some more of these cool places that we happen to be playing. Uh, we have the Winds of Cold Spring Harbor at the end of the month, June 28th, our second time there. Of God four, bless the Tiki Bar. This season. It's nice, dude. If you haven't been since they got the fire. I was there. I was there last night for a little bit. Once you got bathrooms, big improvement. Beautiful bathrooms. Yep. <laughs> Had to get stuck changing a lot of bathrooms, so bathrooms matter. Yes. Like crazy. Yeah. Like crazy. Uh, so then, uh, when we go to, we're going to play a place in the Swigo. Uh, we've never played the Sting on June thirtieth. Okay. And then one of our favorite places, Abandoned Brewery out in Penyan. And awesome, beautiful. July one and July two. Ooh, take note. This is what. Steve over there was throwing, make sure we didn't forget, Haber Mill Island, which we just got added to this bill, Chuck Cheo show, for July 2, big fireworks on the island with uh, with uh, the duo and the primetime horns and our really great friends, Hard Promises. Oh, so awesome. We're, it's going to nice. be a super cool show, and yep. then it goes after Hard Promises, yeah. mega fireworks. That's awesome. Awesome. That's cool. Speaking yeah. of speaking of playing, how much you play us a song? Oh, look at that guy with the segue. Good wow. segue. These guys are professionals. Well, you Whoa. know. Well, if we were real professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We would have probably asked you that 20 minutes ago. Uh, right? we're, we're like fanboys listening to all the Lost Horizon stories anyway. Yes, so. you, honestly, do yeah. We're going to do a couple of two and then talk a little and then do another one. Well, we got three for you. It was all our, uh, these are our songs. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. 
We do a little, little uh, pony thirst. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is called Pony Wish. All right. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell him? So I got to tell you this. You're going to hate me <laughs> because Zoom suppre- does compression. Uh, crushing it? Yes. It, could, it like it cut almost the whole thing out. Oh, well. I know. I, w- I said, this I, sucks. This what am I going to do? It terrible. It I'm bummed. Yeah. I'm so bummed. Okay. We've got that. Oh, we're going to echo it. Oh, I can hear it now. Let me turn that off. Oh, oh, sorry. We have had latency dilemmas before. Well, I, I even I shot. even tried to turn. To so if that's that. just totally crushed, it is. Edit that out, and then, but leave in the part where we're talking about editing it out because that'll be fun. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. As far as the audio is concerned, there's really not much we can do because it goes no. straight to Spotify. But at least they'll, up until now, they'll be in their car going. Something's wrong with my radio. I know. And that's and we can just blame it. <laughs> All your shitty radios. That was an incredible sound. Fun. We loved it. Yes. Yeah. You guys with your bad car stereos. It's, it's your fault. You missed yeah, it. You know. oh, it's fun. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I wish. I wish it I was. Wish it, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. You know, technology is a great thing until it doesn't until work the way we want it to be. No, it's yeah. working against us. That's right. Yes, sons of bitches. You had this going on last night where Peg told you machines don't always like her. Oh. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, well, but then when they get, once they get to know her, it's okay. Right, right. It's well, okay. yeah, because I couldn't tag her in anything for some reason. Oh. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't but like. Then it showed she up didn't when, like the oh, band she page. Didn't like the... So I don't know why that didn't. Some days the Facebook is your friend, and some days it's a lot. Of work. If it's coming from me, because we're friends on on the Facebook machine, there, right? Everything's good, but and the band on the business suite. Yeah. If I don't know if 
I don't know if you well, if you followed the people, band. Sometimes it'll yeah. let you do entities. Like I could do right the, the good, the band, and the ugly. Which, by the way, every time I have been telling anybody they love the name of the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, uh, what's his name that's going to be up on our show in a couple of weeks? Um, Sam Vecchio pulled me aside the other night. He said, oh, okay. dude, it's all about marketing. The good, the yeah. band, and the ugly is freaking it, yeah. priceless. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry to my our friend Greg. We call him the road manager monkey, even though he doesn't actually come on the road. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell him, I go, dude, we're doing this podcast. This and I tell him the name, and he goes, what? That's great. <laughs> Yeah, we we, we have fun doing it. I mean, it's it's informative for a lot. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, we miss we miss playing. Yeah, and until we find the right drummer, we will continue to be Spinal Tap, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> looking oh, for I new get, drummers. I get, the problem is, it just people people spontaneously combust all the time. All the time. Read, yes, you don't read about. It. Yeah, yeah. It, just us. Just yeah, just us. For well, some our, reason. Am, our amps do go to eleven. They do. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and all people... there was left was a small green globule on the drum stool. Yes, <laughs> I or... had this T-shirt made. It's anatomically correct. These are my ribs. <laughs> yeah, these are my actual bones. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, we we definitely had we had our share of Spinal Tap moments. Oh, and... I've had a bunch of them, and I've had the one where they get lost, and then and and. Uh, and uh, Bo Diddley is is the janitor in that scene, and he keeps yeah. telling him, you, oh, you boys must have made a wrong turn going to the stage. And this like, yep. cat comes. goes, you just got to go down there, take a little jog to the left. And, this, then, and, and the singer goes, I don't think we have time for jogging. <laughs> I don't think there's time for that. Yep. You know, the you boys must have made a wrong turn somewhere. Right. <laughs> Getting to the stage. Uh, but I had that happen at a college in Niag- at Niagara University with my friends, the Miamis. We were using a part of a dormitory, and it was a giant ass building. Uh, we got so lost trying to get back to this outdoor stage. We kept coming out the wrong <laughs> side of the building. Going, Where did the lawn go? It was it was bad. It, it, That's I think funny. We were lost for about fifteen minutes. Oh no! How about when we played? We couldn't find where we're going. When we and, uh, oh all right. <laughs> oh my god, dude! We, we had no clue. We what? played up at the dome. Oh, and and they're like. All right, well, you can unload, but you know, you gotta park your car and unload the rest of it. Right. We didn't realize where they put us. And we're carrying gear like up the hill, down roads. We're like, what the fuck? Up and down stairs. Oh they had the a spot. Dome is a dome for people who have never tried to work there, which I did a bunch of times. <sighs> Not fun because it's an airlock. You have to go into a thing and you're put into a thing yep. and then another door opens because it's all pressurized. Yes. Right. And then you can't, there's a lot of places you can't drive once you go inside because depending on what sporto is coming or concert thing, they used to have bands uh, before and at the end during the middle of basketball. Right, right. So I we. There a couple of times, and then I worked for Maria DeSantis and Mario DeSantis, and they used to do uh, graduation dinner for the parents and seniors, yep. which was in the whole floor of the dome. It was a, oh my God, it was. Like a, a, an event yeah. unto itself, just setting up. We yeah. we actually played in the quad before football. Uh, football. Oh my god! Yeah, the the uh, they had they had us. We did the first and third, I think. Show. You think so? They had never done it before, nope. and yes, your quad is a big space. It was very big, big space. space. Yeah, we had huge, and we had a stage that's about the size of your table. Oh yeah! <laughs> not only not that only that, sense. but. They were afraid if they were afraid for the stage to be have any significant height. Right. So it was only as high as a pallet. Oh god. It might have been like four so inches if, four inches off the ground. Four inches off the ground. We had to get a special insurance rider because yeah. we were gonna be playing on this stage and we thought, oh, it's gonna be a big stage. Right. And we get there and I'm like, What the fuck is that? That's Did they just funny. remove it's, they just remove cardboard off this thing? This is the I know. stage. This is it. Oh, God. Oh, the props were in danger of being crushed by dwarves. That's correct. <laughs> we that had is... Stonehenge, Stonehenge came down. came down. With fishing line. I said six <laughs> feet, not six <laughs> inches. inches. Jackass. The triptychs are huge. So we were talking about getting lost. So we, the first time we played at the gig at the Turning Stone, and we were 
like try and follow the rules very specifically. We don't take breaks anymore, but they had a very specific schedule. Yes. Couple of oh, breaks, yeah. And we were like, well, this is the first time we're here. We're going to change out for all for each three set. We're going to come out in this. We're changing this break. We'll change that. We can't find the dressing room. And we can't find our way back to the dressing from the dressing room. And we got so I know it. incredibly lost. Yeah. yeah, we played there three times, and we, under, we understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, because you got to go around the corner, up the stairs. Up the stairs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't walk in on the wrong dressing room. And the people we had to speak English. Okay, that was like, no, yeah. you're right. They're like, going, what? Like, when was doing <laughs> yeah, we yeah, exactly. We, we made it work, but it was, it was a tough one. Which, but it was, I was exactly like Spinal Tap. I was waiting to run into Bo Diddley and well, tell me I needed to take a jog up to the left. That's right. Yeah. But well, we, we make fun of Tim uh, from Gridley Page, but Tim, because he does uh, some wardrobe changes, mm -hmm. but he has a cage behind the stage, like in the hallway there. Yeah. And that's where he, he uh, changes there, so he doesn't have to go all the way up. So right. I'm like, he's got like a Superman kind of thing going exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. he's got his own phone booth, yep. you know. I, and I, how's he do that so quick? I know how that's far that freaking dressing room. Yeah, is. exactly. Now, uh, see, now Patty's gonna want a phone booth. Well, you know they have those pop up showers you can bring when you go camping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so you just that. Yeah, pop yeah, that yeah. up, jump pop in there. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. May have to get one of those. That's all. I'm gonna order one tonight. And we'll paint it to look like a phone booth. Yes. Yeah. Even better. Or the or Doctor Who's oh, Doctor Tardis. Who's, yes. Doctor Who's oh, Tardis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Doctor like, Who. Oh, day. sorry. I was in the jacuzzi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all. It's all, God. it's all good. I'm telling you, this has been probably one of the one of the more fun, informative. I mean, I, I interviews we've had. I, I think I could talk to Scott all day long about the Lost Horizon yeah. shows. Oh that, God, yeah, know, yeah. We could definitely ask there about so the, many, the bloopers that have happened there, but you know, I, I should write a book and call it Lost Horizons. I thought about this and just each little just just be like the name of a band and it would be the section of it, but, and it could just go. It just, it's it's insane the yeah. the variety of music that happened in there in this eighties nineties period. It just doesn't make sense. One of my favorite bands that played there, and I felt bad because there was hardly anybody there, was Brother Kane. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a, that was yeah. They were good too, and they were fantastic. No, small. And that happened a few times. Blue Oyster Cult uh, had twelve people at it. But uh, um, the first time that Primus played there, I thought it would be packed, and there was probably about one hundred fifty people. But in it was amazing, and Twenty Four Seven Spies was the opener, who were also equally as amazing. And the Primus guys were crazy nice. It was the sailing the sea of cheese tour? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. The Guar shows were incredible. Oh, and you think, uh, like, well, we had the Neville brothers in the same room that we had Guar in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we had the outfield in the same room that we had, you know, uh, uh, you know, the dead Kennedys in. <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you had, my God, you had so tendencies played there. And then, and then, and, and, you know, and so did, uh, Kid Rock. Know, uh, Guns N' Roses and uh, on Halloween, for gosh sakes. Yeah, yeah. Which at that's sacrilegious because that's a Rock and Bones night. Halloween yeah, was the, always uh, a Rock the, and Bones uh, show. Here's a good, here's a good Guns N' Roses moment from that show. Izzy and um, I think Axel and somebody else are sitting at the far side of the bar. Patty's feeding them drinks. Doors aren't open, obviously yet. And the guitar tech comes up to Izzy, he goes, listen, man. And he, oh, he takes a drink and slides it out from in front of him. I don't want you getting super fucked up like you did in Cleveland, man. I'm not going to do that again. He takes the drink and slides it back. What are you talking about? He doesn't remember. You lost the West Paul, the white West Paul. What are you talking about? He's so cranked up and crazy and drunk on stage. He goes out into the beginning of the crowd. Playing, having the guitar, holding it over, takes it off. He's letting people like strum it, right? Guy grabs the neck, takes off with it, goes through the crowd and out the front door with his white left ball. Yep. <laughs> Crew are trying to surf through the, the thing; they can't catch him. He's gone. And but Izzy was so drunk, he didn't remember doing. It. That's awesome. That's great. So there's a little lost horizon at the bar moment. There you go. Right there. See, you can't you can't make this shit up. No. And again, that's why it no, would be. No, it that's was, why he needs to put there, out a book. It, it was there. It happened. 
I think what we need to do, somebody needs to actually do a documentary. Oh, on the Lost Horizon. On the Lost Horizon. If you go online and look that up, there is a miniature one. I saw it. You were on it. Yeah, yeah. And it's about 20 or 25 minutes long. It's made by a couple of college students. Really well done. Yep. The daughter is, one of them is a the daughter of a friend of mine, although I don't think I knew that one. Chuck Teo is in it. Dave Rezik is in it. I'm in it. Yep. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm not sure if John Hass is in that or not. But there's another like key component of that world. It was made after Greg was gone. Right. Uh, and uh, it's really, really good. Yeah. It's Have you really seen the Weeds Port? You, you, you get a lot of cool insight from Chuck. Yep. And they use me. I talk a lot. And sometimes you see things and it's just me. And there's a part where I just name bands. While yep. they're showing pictures, and it's just nuts, you know. It's like, oh yeah, well, Soundgarden, you do Louis Cole and Bon Jovi and Guns right. N' Roses, and Cinderella, just, and just that, on and on and on. just that dressing room wall. If we could just oh. take that wall and preserve yeah. it for life, because yeah. it's. And Kiss did not ever play there. Ace did. Ace I've had did. a lot of. Hannes has had people yeah. try, try it. He, he called. He called me once. Greg's nephew, that you know runs King clubs and corner bar. Great guy. Yep. Mike Powell's a guitar player too, uh, and we talk about you know like authenticating whether there are things that some people thought happened actually happened. But but Ace did play there, and he was really cool. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't know Kiss did not play the New York Dolls did play there, but it was before I worked there. Okay, did you see the Weedsport Speedway documentary? No. Yeah, oh. there's a there's a four parter on. I actually have it. Oh, cool. And it goes through where they started, what it became, and then what happened when they tore it down, and then they rebuilt it. Yeah, it's a really. Well, I saw a lot of I saw a lot of crazy shows there. Yes, exactly. So did I, and I'm sure Mike did too. Oh yeah, yeah. I was at the oversold Aerosmith Guns N' Roses show. Yes, that was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. I agree. Yeah, they even there's talk about point, that. They there's do. There's a point in the show that's in a Rolling Stone article. Yes, it is. Where, where Axel is talking about what happens at Castle Donington when someone died in the crowd and they're doing the show, but they don't know that it's happened. Right. right. And then he talks, he goes, you think that was a lot of people or an oversold to me. There's a point about three quarters of the set. We're just watching the show. We're not really looking behind us. Axel Rose goes, oh, my God, because he kind of realizes that there's well, it's probably sold about 8,000 people. There's at least 16,000 yeah, people. Yeah, easily. The space met for eight. Yep. We tried to get up the stairs in between Guns N' Roses and Aerosmith and were almost crushed to death. Wow. Wow. It was super scary. He yeah. got fined for that and he did the same they did the same thing, I think, with Def Leppard. Yes. There was tons and tons of people. Same as summer. I believe it was in the rain. Well, I think that's what caused all the problems for that show. I could have been. Yeah. It's too bad. Those concerts like that I'll are have to look for the, I will look for the weed sport doc. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's a four-part. It's like a four-part mini-series kind of thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Is that all you got to say about that? Maybe. I think they're frozen. They're again. frozen again. Well, they're frozen with smiles <laughs> on their face. No, we're not. We're here. <laughs> we're here. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a four-part. Well, anyway, dude, I, thank you guys for doing for doing this show. It's so cool. Well, we're we're yeah. as, as you see, there's really no forum to it. We just like to no. just we. People said to us the part they like the most is that they feel like they're standing next to us at a party and these are four friends or five friends or whatever just talking yeah. about the old days. Yes. And they've always wanted to be a fly on the wall to hear these little hear the stories. So, you know, when, I, when I'm booking, and that's primarily my job, is mm -hmm. the, the local musicians that I know people want to hear stuff about. Yeah. And Scott, I mean, of course you came up immediately because I believe Scott okay. to be one of the pillars uh, of Syracuse uh, history. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for sure. It's like seeing one of the Colosseums, you know, the columns in Greece. I don't know. I feel very pillarly, but, but thanks. It's, it's very fun. I listened to the, I listened to the Lee Anderson uh, uh, show you did. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We, we have, we have uh, 16 more. You can listen, uh, 17 more. You can 17. listen to. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And they're all archived on the thing, Mike, so people can just go there and, and, and listen yes. to them. Yes, yep. Spotify, Spotify right Spotify down. has them all. Yep. And we just recently started with the video, so there's uh, this will be the fourth or fifth one? Yeah, if you, we had uh, oh, very cool. John Hamilton and Frank McQueenie uh, ended up doing two hours. We, yeah. we split it, 
into two shows. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, actually, it was more like three. It's oh, it was actually it was it was, it was an hour three. and a half each. Yeah, yeah. but they were ta- we were talking about everything. The days when uh, he was with Belladonna and manslaughter and uh, most yep. embarrassing moment uh, the band getting in a fight on stage and then breaking up and on breaking stage. up on stage yep. uh, cuz <laughs> yeah. they were all drunk and if you remember uh Brian Mann and uh John Very Hammond, well. and uh, they yes. they liked they liked their cocktails yes uh, <laughs> so in true Brian fashion they were doing drinking games and by the end of the day Mike White said I knew this was going to happen you guys suck and then Brian just said or uh John Hamilton John. said, "You know what, Mike? You're out of the band." <laughs> but then they forgot they were doing this on stage in front of a whole, uh, oh god, a show, a show, outdoor so show. Great. Yeah, yeah. These things happen. And, yep. and John said that was the first time in 38 years that anyone ever booed us. Yeah, and 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 told us to get off the stage. <laughs> so, <laughs> Patty so. knows of Jeff because she has Jeff's book. We sort of have like kind of like he likes all our stuff and our posts, so we have a little odd communication with him out in Arizona. Yeah, but, so, but uh, Brian and I talk about a lot about man man slaughter M A N N slaughter. Yeah, and the Man Brothers. Yeah, Brian is a character uh, to be sure. I I, I uh, that was one of my first uh, playing out gigs was playing with those guys. Uh, I, my That's first cool. drumming gig was playing with the Lannings and uh, Brian. And uh, Jim Pfeiffer, Mike yeah. and Jeff, Mike and Jeff Lanning were so great. And those oh. guys are great. They worked so hard at that at their band. Yeah, well, um, they were doing stuff before anybody else did some of that. Some of that heavy. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. The Sacred Death was a, just a great speed metal band, yep. and uh, a lot of people got kind of got in to try to got Bob Aquaviva get help them out a lot and help them make a really that really good recordings that they did. And yep. uh, Jeff Tatora. Those guys were just so into it, you know. I, I really like those guys a lot. Yeah, Tatora drum for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the band was incredible. Yeah. We, 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 it was just so fun. Tom Abraham who went on to mix, like, everybody great in the world and got very, you know, involved in helping them, you know, get to that, get the sounds that they needed to have. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, there was, it was just, those all those shows are really fun when that, that kind of crazy... Everybody was afraid to have, you know, that was the great thing with the Lost Rise. It was fearless. We, we didn't care what kind of music it was, but if you played music and you didn't suck, we could have a good time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think Frank even mentioned, McQueenie mentioned he was playing with Sleaze, and one of the national acts canceled at the last minute. L.A. Guns. L.A. Guns. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a great night. And they came out in their underwear. And uh, he did not. He wouldn't. Right. He would not. The rest of the band played in their underwear, not Frank. Nope. And he said that it's been a regret of his his yeah, whole musical exactly. career. So, L.A. Guns show up, set the stage gear up. Drummer quits, gets in a cab, flies to the airport, goes back to California. Happened in our parking lot, That's... and we were so pissed. They had to been. We kept all the opening bands, and we dropped the cover to like two bucks, and we had L.A. Guns hate night, and we talked about it all night long. The same <laughs> thing happened with um, another one of those L.A. bands I never really liked. Uh, <laughs> oh, the singer's dad. Bill uh, come to me in a minute. She, who does that cherry pie song? Warrant. Warrant. They did the same thing. They set up the stage gear. And then they they camp. I think the singer was tired. It was a Tuesday. They figured they had to clear play for Ritz next night, like a lot of people would at the time. They would be playing in New York, either at Lemoore's, yeah. Brooklyn, or the Ritz in in the city. Good math again. That's why we had those shows because we were not. We were four, only a four hour drive to the city. Yep. So cool. And uh, the warrant guy bailed like after the gear was up. Sally Gunn, same thing. They set all the stuff up. And then took it down. And we did the same thing both those nights. We kept all the openers. We charged like two bucks to get in. And everybody stayed. Both yeah. shows. And all of the regular bands all got to play longer. And we made it into the best we could do with, with like, you know. When when Warren did that, there were already a couple hundred people already online when they started taking their stuff out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Try to get that money out of Greg's hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God, the rest of his soul. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know. Part of our job was to like come up with instantaneous solutions so Greg wouldn't have a heart attack, mm-hmm. you know, because the headliner has just walked on us, the owner. Right. And uh, but we always made it work. 
We always made it work. I wonder, I wonder if Warrant left one of their drum road cases behind. Here we go. And the embellisher <laughs> Here we took go. that and told everybody he was the new drummer for Warrant. That's how it became. Yeah. We're not we're, we 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 have a we have a an acquaintance that has been telling this fib for years that he was a he was ah, a drummer from Warrant. Drummer for Warrant. I'm not going to mention. Yeah, right. I'm not going to mention the embellisher's name. Any names. But no names. Yeah, no names. we're definitely. I would never mention Randy Barrington's name. No. Uh, that would be rude if I mentioned. Extremely mention rude. Randy Barrington. Yeah, you know I don't even know. Do you name. know who's Randy Barrington? Man? Nobody knows yeah, Randy, Randy Barrington. What's his name again? What? Randy Barrington? What's his name? <laughs> we don't know. We've never heard of him. Bandy Rarrington Bandy. is his name. Bandy. Yes. Yeah, Bandy. Bandy. Yeah, Bandy. Playboy photographer and warrant drummer. Warrant drummer. Yep. You can be any lie you want to be. Yes. Yes. Including just, my 170 acres. Just 176. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just embellish. <laughs> just embellish. My family started Hooters. Yep, my family Such started a... Hooters, and I am broke. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We uh, that was that was an hour and a half show yeah. on uh, of on, just a, on the embellisher, <laughs> the embellisher of just, of just stories. That's good, yeah, that could be a TV that series. Is it is. Oh my god, it is great idea. It could it be. be the embellisher. Yep, That's great right. idea. Yeah, well, they had one called the imposter, I think, years ago or something. Yeah, or the impersonator, the impersonator, something. He he yeah. was some prodigy, and he could he could be anything he wanted to lie about. Yep. Wow. Hey, I think we just figured out the the problem. He must have, he must have been on that uh, dating show, Who Wants to Date a Millionaire, and one of them is and one of them isn't. He always wasn't. <laughs> he always wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice, though. Yeah, we better get off that. Yeah, we better topic. get off that. Yeah, people would be like, I already heard an hour and a half of this bullshit. Yeah, Shut no up, shit. you two idiots. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, but thank you, fellas. Guys, it was yeah. great. Patty, nice to meet you. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. We you. definitely want to have you back. I know you're yeah. going to be playing a lot. Um, Love to come back. You let me know. Just yeah, any know. anytime you've got something to promote, you know, let us know. Just let us know, and we will uh, ex- more than gladly Absolutely. help you out. Yeah, and if you All could, right. what we what we will ask of you is, you know, after you hang up here, you've got the setup there. Just throw your cell phone on and record, you know, a little bumper for us, and uh, we'll oh, use it. We'll use it to start we'll the show off. Show. You know, oh, you know. excellent! Yeah, we'll make a little mini, mini, mini yeah. movie for you in moments from now. Yeah, we like, have, like, we have one that uh, Mike's going to play. I think if you can hear. Hi, it. this is Rick DiUlio from TK99 Radio in Syracuse, and you're listening to a couple of degenerates. And unfortunately, I'm related to one of them. This is the good, the band, and the ugly. So yeah, that's, that's all you need. Awesome, dude. We'll, we'll do that. We'll send you a send you a. Great. It'll be, have a visual too. We we'll do whatever you want with it. Yeah. That's fine. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you so guys. much. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks a bunch of the votes. Thank you so much. Take it easy. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Go check out Mr. Monkey off. wherever they are. Yeah. yeah. Check out the monkey. Yep. Check out the monkey. Monkey. Don't spank the monkey. <laughs> Why not? Check out the monkey. Don't Sam gets I think we should come out with a band called Mr. Chicken. Too many chickens. Choke the chicken and slap the monkey. Oh, yeah. Have a mind. double double header. You know what? We just we just need <laughs> we just need to get the hell out of here. Then we just need the end of this. Shit. <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh god. Oh man. So don't forget, coming up this weekend, see through faded at Rockies, Blues Fest at the Fairgrounds. Ooh, yeah, baby. And locals only at the Lost Horizon. Yeah. Thank the Print Shop Underground. Yes. We to thank our uh, our friends out thank at our the, friends at Good Nature Brewery. Good Nature Brewery, yeah. We got to uh, thank the, uh, DJ Life's a Beach. Okay, he uh, check out Facebook. He's doing karaoke all over the city. He is now a sponsor of ours. Oh, awesome! He DJ's parties. He does music for weddings and everything. Perfect. So we want to make it. sure DJ Life's a Beach. DJ Life's a Beach. Son of a beach. Him too. What just happened? Well, that was quick. <laughs> the music. Oh, you know why we did that? Because we wanted to make sure we could play a little bit of some of the other music as well. So check this out. This is this is our good this friend. This is actually from our good friend. Mr. Mr. Jeff Rosen. You love him. You know him as j Ro. j Ro. Yeah, he made this in his basement. 
Yeah, well, you know what? It sounds fucking it sounds great. Great. If you guys like it, let us know. We're, we're thinking, well, we want to change it. Yeah, we want to change it up a little every now and then. So, so now you got a little J Row music. J Row music. Anyways, you've been listening to Good The Band, The Ugly. I'm Big Papa. I'm Jeff. Well, I don't think we introduced ourselves earlier. That's okay. They know who we are. We know. T-shirts are here. They are. They are here thanks to the Print Shop Underground. Yep. So if you want a T-shirt, well. Just stick around and watch the Facebook, because if I give you a question about tonight's Uh, episode, you could win one. Yeah. You know who won the first one? Only correct answers. You know who won the first one? If I'm thinking correctly, and I know that I am. Better hurry up. The music's ending. Wayne Johnson. W. Johnson. Winner. Chicken dinner. dinner. You know it's summer when Wayne's Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're out of here. Peace. Love you. Recording stopped.